There's only one month left until your GCSEs or your A-levels. Every single day you're waking up, you're drained, you're tired, you're anxious, you're telling yourself, I have a month left and I can't save myself. Or you've hit a plateau where you've reached a grade and you wanna get higher, but you just simply can't. And as a result, you're procrastinating, you're putting off your work, you're telling yourself, what more can I possibly do? And you're scrolling through YouTube and you're clicking on videos like this. Well, guess what? This is gonna be the very last video you're ever gonna have to watch because I'm gonna tell you how to secure the best possible grades that you can get in literally under four weeks. Starting with step number one, throw this off the balcony. At the time of filming this video, I am currently in Egypt and this is the balcony that is in my apartment. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be opening up this balcony and I am going to be throwing my phone off of it. Don't mind all of the background noise, but this phone is gonna be dropped to that floor. Okay, of course I'm not gonna do that, I'm not crazy, but the point is this needs to be as far away from you as possible. I need to get this point into your head. One month before my GCSEs and A-levels, I literally locked my phone away in a separate room. I didn't leave any group chats, I didn't block any of my friends, I just simply put it on do not disturb and I checked it once a day at the end of the day. What nobody realizes is that it's literally just a month, a month where you study, where you work hard, and after this month is gone, you are gonna be having one of the best holidays, if not the best holiday of your life. You're gonna be spending 24 seven on this phone after after a month, just for now, leave it because if you don't leave it, then you're gonna be distracted by it. There's no other way to put it. You're gonna be picking up your phone when you feel like you're not able to study. When you don't have energy, you're gonna use it as an excuse to scroll on TikTok. It's gonna make things so much worse. And when I tell you none of the steps that I'm about to tell you in the rest of this video works if your phone is nearby, I mean it. It needs to be locked away. That's the harsh reality. And now let's go on to step number two. This is gonna sound so weird, but step number two is compare yourself to others. Listen, your final exams are not graded based on a set grade grading system. What I mean is that there's no set marks every single year which determines what grade you're gonna get. I don't know if this is how it works in other countries but in the UK you're graded based on the people around you. So for example the top five or so percent are gonna get the grade nine, the highest grade. For A-levels it's also a very similar process. Your grade is relative to everyone else and the reason why you need to have this in mind is because in a month's time when you sit your exam if you don't do that well or if you count your marks up and you feel like you did worse than the grading system for the year before or what might happen is that you might get discouraged and if you do get discouraged what you need to remember is that you are graded based on the people around you need to know that if you struggle chances are everyone else struggles. now a very quick story is that during my a levels for example i thought i did really bad in one of my exams and then after the exam i went around and i asked some of my really smart friends and they all told me that they struggled with the exam too and then I got way higher than I actually expected and it led me to getting into, you know, one of the top 10 universities in the world. And so my point is that you need to know that if you're struggling, a lot of people around you are going to be struggling. Don't be too harsh on yourself because in a month's time, if you don't do that well, it might discourage you from trying on other exams. And this mindset is extremely important before we go on to step number three. And now we're gonna go on to step number three, know where you are at. I want you to get a piece of paper and make four different columns. First of all, write your subject title at the top of the page. And then in the first column, write down the list of subjects that you are yet to learn. In the next column, write down the list of subtopics that you are yet to make flashcards for. In the third column, write down the list of subtopics that you have made flashcards for and you're currently doing active recall and memorizing. And in the fourth column, write down past papers and list the exact number of past papers that you've done for that topic. And so now you should have four columns. Get a red pen and cross out the entire second column, which should be subjects that you are yet to make flashcards for. I'm sorry to say this, but if there's a month left, you really don't have that much time to be doing flashcards. If there is a topic that you're still learning and you're making flashcards for as you're learning it, skip the entire part about flashcards. Make sure that you focus on the first and your third column. Memorizing the flashcards that you have done and learning the content that you haven't learned. Because if you spend hours every single day making new flashcards, it's not going to make a difference. The time that you're going to be spending making the flashcards, what you could do instead is you could go to your screen that you're learning the content from, you could cover it up and you could ask yourself questions rather than having to get a piece of paper, cutting it out and making flashcards for it. The point is you should be focusing on the first and the third column and then after that we're going to go on to the next step. Step number four, go on a past paper craze. You should be addicted to past papers because there's a month left and what I want you to make sure you get done in the next four weeks is every single past paper 
data from the latest specification. What I mean is, for example, the GCSE new specification came out in 2016. And so obviously, if you're watching this now, then you need to be doing every single past paper from 2016 until the current year. And by doing that, you're making sure that you've done every single past paper with the new spec questions so that you've tested yourself on everything. That is the bare minimum amount of past papers that you need to do. And in my opinion, even that is not enough for a GCSE exam. After that, what you want to do is you want to make sure you find other past papers, whether it be old specification or whether it be teacher made past papers, or if it's just simply exam questions from a website like ExamPro. You need to be making sure that alongside doing the minimum amount of past papers, you want to be doing as many questions as physically possible. They just indulge yourself in the questions, do them over and over and over again. Repeat the questions if you have to memorize the specification answers, because a lot of these questions come up over and over again. You need to have an entire past paper system that is set in place to make sure that you've done all of this in the next month. And if you're thinking, I don't have enough time, a past paper is between one and two hours. And I made a video on how to speed up doing past papers, which I've linked here. And so that should be your priority. When you wake up, you shouldn't be thinking, let me make flashcards. You should be thinking, let me do a past paper. Because the more experience you get, the better you're gonna be when it comes to the final exam. And now you have an action plan, I'm gonna go on to the final step, which is a little bit controversial. If you feel like you have time and if you feel like you're up to scratch, I want you to take an entire 24 hours of study. Obviously, if you're a week out from the exam, then don't do that. But if you've still got a month left and again, you're up to scratch, then make sure to take at least 24 hours off. Let your brain rejuvenate. It's the exact same thing with exercise. You will never grow if you don't have a recovery period. And the best type of recovery period that I personally found was taking an entire 24 hours off because it really helped my brain to re-coordinate and think of what I just learned. And if you are up to scratch and you're telling yourself, I'm not going to take an entire day off, I kind of want you to reconsider your plan a little bit. Because if you're thinking that you're missing an entire day of revision, the amount of recovery that you're going to get and the amount of clearness in your head that you're going to get is going to allow you to study even more longer term. And so that is my step-by-step -step action plan for you. This is the last video I want you to watch on this topic. I know you're searching up one month until GCSEs because I see my analytics on YouTube. I don't want anyone else to be searching it up after you click on this video. What I want you to be doing instead is making sure that you spend that time scrolling on YouTube, studying and revising. Of course, every single Monday I upload study videos, whether it's me figuring out and cracking different study methods or whether it's me reacting to TikTokers and calling them out on their bad study technique. Trust me, I've got it all and I've got so many videos planned for you guys in the future. So make sure to subscribe and stay tuned.